Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he's thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. For my soul praise Him, for He is my health and salvation. All you who hear, now to His temple draw near. Join me in glad
strong Forever God is with us Forever Forever His love endures His love endures forever His love endures forever His love endures forever His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Forever God is faithful Forever God is strong Forever God is with us Thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating. He has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to serve and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. I had to write all this down today because my brain is just going 12 million miles an hour. So, I was watching a video this week on Right Now Media, and Right Now Media is available on our website to anybody that ever wants to use it, and they have a new series out there called Right Now Media for Work. And so it's not necessarily Christian content, but it's more of a leadership content with a Christian attitude. So it's pretty neat. So the one I was watching this week was thriving and surviving in a crisis kind of where we are right now right so one of the things she said and this, this lady is a ceo of a fashion company and that's not exactly stuff that's selling right now and so they've had to figure out how can they keep their company going in the middle of this crisis of covid so she said one of the jobs of leaders is to find solutions to interesting problems which I thought was an interesting phrase. Because she didn't say all the problems, just the interesting ones. Like those boring problems, you know, someone else can do that. But the interesting problems, that's our job. So, interesting. So the main problem in our world right now, not main, but big one, COVID, and our leaders have been working on solutions in medicines and vaccines and treatments and safe practices, such as wearing a mask and staying six feet away from each other. But those can create their own interesting problems. The schools have to figure out how they can spread apart the desks. Um, businesses and churches have to figure out how we could go online when we all had to shut down. Um, how are we going to play football? That's all I can think of. Like, you have to tackle people. There's no way to stay six feet apart and tackle someone. I say Nerf bullets. This is my solution. 
if you get shot with a Nerf bullet, you have been tackled, you must fall down. This is, this is my solution. So one of the bigger problems with staying away from people is how do we help people? How do we, do we love people in our community when we need to stay away from each other? That's, a, that's an interesting problem, right? And the biggest thing that I've thought about this morning is to not forget people. Is that we can still call people, we can still text people, we can email, we can talk to people, check in on them, and let them know that they are not alone. Just how God has never forgotten about us. This morning in Sunday school, we were talking about Moses and the Ten Commandments. And we talked about how rules in general, when our parents give us rules, it means that they care about us. If they didn't want us to succeed, if they didn't want us to not to do things, it would mean they weren't paying attention, which means you don't care about someone if you don't pay attention to them. And so God gives us rules because he cares about us, because he's never forgotten us. So we need to not forget each other. So Heather and I have been working on this interesting problem for a couple of weeks, and we have come up with a couple of ways to still love each other without touching each other. And so that work comes up to virtual mission week. Da, 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 da. Thank you, Laura. I needed that. So virtual mission week is this week. Heather and I have made some, uh, some pretty fun videos with a lot of guest stars that are, some are in the room with us today. Um, and, uh, and we even went on a field trip to make one. And so they're going to be pretty interesting. But it gives you two options for each day of a challenge, of a way that you can love people in your community without touching people. Um, and it's something anybody can do from our itty-bitty to our most experienced members. Um, if you can't get out of your house, if you can't um, drive, if you don't have money, there's something that you can do every day. Send those five challenges back to us, and you get a free T-shirt. Woo-hoo! And it says, in this together, First Methodist Mission Week 2020. Um, and it's a, a nice color. Um, the adult ones, are you listening, Lily? The adult ones are blue. The youth ones are purple. She was like, why aren't they purple? But then they didn't have the blue ones in the youth sizes, so we get purple. Um, and it's a great way for us. The reason I love T-shirts so much is because it can show people in our community by us wearing them that, hey, look what First Methodist is doing, that we are still out there. We are still loving people, and we want them to come join us in our community in this congregation. And it's a... It's a Great advertising tool. Just be frank with that. So, Mission Week. I don't feel well today, so that's why I'm a little weird today. So, Mission Week, Monday through Friday. Look on social media and our website for a video. Submit yours back. Let us know what you're doing and if you're participating. And we'll have a great week. That's it. Thanks. Bye. Gabia, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> we hope that you will, will join us, tune in. Um, like they say, it's going to be a surprise each day, so you have to tune in each day to our website to find out what the mission for that day is. All right? And I know you can do it. Anybody on Facebook out there? All right, and the rest of you are telling me. So um, the... Uh, uh, so if you can get on Facebook, you can do this. If you have trouble, call the office, and Melissa or Heather will be glad to walk you through the process. Okay? All right. The, uh, it, it's time to, to pray. And so um, we just are thankful to the Lord for his sweet presence with us today. Uh, our worship has been wonderful. And, uh, proclamation of his love forever and so we give thanks and praise to God for his love you know I was thinking about that uh, and I was trying to find out where it, it went but it didn't so um, love covers a multitude of sins and then I got to thinking about for God so loved the world that that love that he has for us because Christ died for us and rose again that we can experience that love and live in covenant friendship with God.
And that's exciting. Uh, it's new every morning. It presents interesting problems for us to solve. And so let us rejoice in, in the presence of God our Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit who is here stirring our hearts even now. Father, we just thank you for your love is overwhelming. It breaks every barrier. It releases all sin. If we will call upon the name of the Lord. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for this great salvation. We thank you, Father, for growth and grace. And in the power of that grace overflowing from our lives into the lives of others. And that, Lord, you planned it that way the light that you shine in our hearts would show forth in the broken places in our lives bringing healing to us and to others so Lord we worship you and magnify your name Father I thank you that you have loved us so well and so Lord in that love we lift up these prayers that are being prayed by the congregation and by myself we pray for our nation. We're in the midst of decision and choice with the election coming up and all the disequilibrium. But Father, we hear your voice and we pray for our nation. We pray for the men and women that we have elected And Father, we know that you hold the president's heart in your hand and you direct it like you direct the course of water. That's what the scripture says. And so we pray for him that he will hear your voice and be obedient. We pray for our vice president and the cabinet and the house and the senate, the Supreme Court, Father. And Lord, it just seems like it's one big cotton picking mess. But we know, Father, that you still sit on the throne. And that, Lord, you will accomplish your purposes in this nation. And so we, we pray for that end. Help us return to you, Father. We pray for our, our state government and county and city government. Lift them up, Father. We pray for our first responders, for our sheriff's department, our police department, uh, the state troopers, the fire department, the EMTs, uh, the emergency room staff, the, uh, all these people, Lord, who are helping us. And, and um, we just lift them up, Father, that uh, they are being exposed to this uh, pandemic in ways that we are not because of the care they're giving. And so, Lord, be with them and bring your healing into their lives for those who, who are exposed and, and uh, have this virus. For you are the God who heals us. And so, Father, we thank you. And, Father, the congregation here, we have needs for healing. Some express, some unexpressed. And so we lift them up because you are the God who heals us. And I speak a word of healing in the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. And Father, we thank you for those opportunities and for the blessings that you bestow upon us. And so, Father, minister to your people. Remember those who serve in the military and we lift them up. And especially in places of armed conflict, be present and powerful. Many of our young People are coming to know Jesus Christ as Savior. And so, Lord, uh, when they come here to die us, uh, Lord, just open the doors. Uh, let them know that, that we love them, that we pray for them, that they are welcome here. And so, Lord, uh, be in the midst of that. 
And Father, for the care that this congregation gives to one another and the love they share with one another. Continue to bless those things, Father. and Multiply them, Lord. And, and Lord, uh, uh, people are reaching out every day to people they don't even know. And so, Father, uh, let your spirit lead and guide that and be in the midst of that. And, and encourage their hearts, Father. Lord, we give you thanks and praise because you have placed this in our lives. And so, Lord, be with us. Help us to be your servants. And, Father, we thank you for your wonderful love in Christ Jesus. He taught us to pray like this. He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue to worship the Lord uh, as we uh, receive an offering. Of course, you'll be putting it in the box here, the one in the back or the plates in the atrium. But uh, uh, thank you for being so faithful with your giving. Uh, the, the church has been blessed, and uh, we're able to do all the things that we need to do because of your faithfulness. So thank you so much. Father, just pour out the, from the windows of heaven a blessing upon your people and encourage their hearts and strengthen them as they continue to worship you in giving. And we ask this blessing, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A few weeks ago, Ginger texted me a song that she hoped we might sing during our worship time. And when I looked it up on YouTube, I immediately knew why she wanted us to do that. It's written by a man named Jonathan David Helzer. And he is a worship leader in a very large church in California. And he began by telling this story. He said a few months before, he had received a call about a young boy in their congregation who was seriously ill. His name was Jackson. In fact, he was so ill, he had been airlifted to a critical care unit and was fighting for his life. He said in the congregation, a symphony of prayer rose up on behalf of this little boy's life. A couple of weeks later, he received a text from the boy's father who said that Jackson had gotten worse and they weren't sure that he was going to survive the night. And Jonathan said as soon as he read that message, it was like this giant of unbelief just stood in front of him. And he thought, Jackson is going to die. We are not going to see the miracle. But he said as this giant stood in front of him, this song just welled out of him, and it says this, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah, my weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing in the middle of a storm, louder and louder, you're going to hear my phrases roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. And as the song starts, the camera zooms out to the congregation. And you see this man with a little boy sitting on his shoulders, who is Jackson. And you know, you may be facing a giant this morning. I think we're all facing giants. And so as we sing, I hope that you'll be reminded that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. And sometimes our weapon is a melody. We're going to have the words on the screen. Feel free to join us as we sing. I raise a hallelujah. 
presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Yeah. 
Sing that again as we offer up the sacrifice of praise. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Surrounded by you, 
They look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Thank you, Father. It's Amanda, right? Okay. We're going to pray for Amanda, Patrick's sister. Um, she is, uh, they think she's going to die. Patrick is Melissa's wife, a uh, husband. <laughs> anyway, let's just lift her up and pray for her right now. Together is the body of Christ, surrounding her with our prayer. Father, we, we just lift Amanda before the throne of grace. We ask, Lord, that in the midst of all these difficulties, that you would reach down and that you would touch her and that you would bring wholeness to her, Father. Surround her with your presence as only you can, Father. And speak life. Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you, Father. Well, I am just so excited to be here today. This is, that, that is a beautiful song. Thank you for having that for us today. Uh, it, it just... It's fitting. God is good. And all the time. Amen. I'll get started here in a minute. I just got to get together. Yeah. I want to thank uh, Dr. Philip Meadows for his book, Wesleyan DNA of Discipleship, which I've used often in quote from this series of sermons. I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Michael J. Wilkins for his invaluable help in understanding the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, so our scripture comes from Matthew chapter 28, um, verses 18 through 20. Is that right? Oh, 16, all right. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Because they've already seen him alive in Jerusalem and stuff like that. Well, uh, what you don't read between the lines is that there was other people there besides the 11 you know, somehow we got to get 500 witnesses that Paul was talking about that saw the risen Lord all at one time. So here's a good place to put that idea in. Then Jesus came to them. So they saw him a ways off, and then Jesus came to him. 
And he said this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. What would it mean to say the world is my parish today? Uh, John Wesley said this a long time ago. But what would it mean to say the world is my parish today? And what is the relationship between world mission and everyday discipleship? What is the relationship between world mission and everyday discipleship? Now, in these verses in Matthew, uh, he summarizes the reasons for the purpose of his gospel. As the risen Jesus gives his great commission to uh, the disciples. These words, perhaps more than any other, distill the outlook and uh, emphasis of the gospel. Now, this was uh, this is a kind of an interesting sentence here. Uh, are, are there any disciples out there? Okay, and the rest of you aren't sure if you're a disciple or not. You're just you know, as disciples. We're to make more of what Jesus has made of us. As disciples, we are to make more of what Jesus has made of us. That that puts disciples on a pretty high platform. You're supposed to be making yourself out there. So Jesus' purpose for coming to earth was to inaugurate Uh, the kingdom of God on earth by bringing men and women into a saving relationship with himself. And that relationship is discipleship to Jesus. That covenant friendship, discipleship to Jesus. So here these men and women are in a mixed state of worship, hesitation, bewilderment, and astonishment. Uh, in the broader group of disciples. And Jesus comes close to them and addresses them and to, to bring strength and calm in the midst of this situation. Some of them have never seen the risen Savior before. And now they see him a ways off and they're like, hmm, who's that? So he comes to them. Jesus comes to us. Jesus comes to us, each and every one of us. To give us calm and strength and help. And his words are an essential foundation for our, our personal security as disciples. Look, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. That's the guy you want to serve. I mean, everything is under his feet. And so it brings security and the foundation for us as disciples to be bold and brave and and to get out there and and make other disciples. And it's also a commission to follow. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, as the risen Messiah, he clearly alludes to his fulfillment of Daniel's prophecy of the Son of Man, who has been given all authority, glory, and sovereign power, who is rightfully worshipped by all people, nations, and men and women of every language, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Uh, Earlier in Daniel chapter 2, about verse 20, 21, he says, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and disposes them. You see, kingdoms rise and fall, but this kingdom lasts forever. And then down in verse 44, in the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end. But 
it will itself endure forever. This is the kingdom that we're part of if we know Jesus Christ as Savior. The authority has been given to Jesus Christ by the Father. And the Son is the mediatorial king through whom all of God's authority is mediated. To mediate means to intervene between people in a dispute or to bring order in order to bring about agreement or reconciliation. We've all been in those places with our friends. Sometimes they say something or we say something and it gets a little messy and, and we come together and pray with one another and, and uh, humble ourselves before the Lord and God straightens it out. Have you never had friends like that? Oh, well, you should get some. That's really great. <laughs> the, uh, you know, uh, it's that Matthew thing. But, um, see, this mediation, this bringing, this reconciliation that God brings through Christ is, is so important. And, you know, if anyone is in Christ. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And sometimes the old gets in the way of the new coming. I just threw that in. It wasn't part of the verse. Just life experience. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So you see, that very thing that God did through Christ, he has given that ministry to us. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's and women's sins against them, and he committed to us the message of reconciliation to one another and also to those who, and I say this, don't yet know Christ as Savior. There's a lot of those folks out there, but they've been invited. And so they need to experience that salvation. And so God has given us that ministry. The resurrected Jesus appears before the disciples to initiate a new order of existence. And the anticipation is his future glorious exaltation and enthronement at God's right hand. And, you know, Philippians chapter 2 talks about that. Starting about verse 5, it says, Let the same attitude that Jesus had be in you, though he was God. Uh, he didn't hold that up and say, Hey, uh, but he humbled himself and became a servant in the likeness of a man. And uh, as a man, he died. He died the death on the cross for us. And as a result of that, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. All authority has been given unto Jesus, our King, our Savior, our friend. As the one with all authority, Jesus rules the plan of establishing God's kingdom throughout the earth. And we uh, become Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. Um, and we implore people to come and we implore them on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. That's, that's how we begin the process of making more disciples. The Great Commission contains one primary central command, make disciples, with three subordinate aspects describing the process or the characterizing the ongoing mandatory process of discipleship. Did you know it was an ongoing mandatory process? It's... It's a uh, imperative. Do you know what that is? It's a command. 
It wasn't a, you know, it's like, kind of like the 10 suggestions in the Old Testament. Yeah. Um, it's a command about making disciples. If you're going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, you are required to do these things. Go. Is anybody here who doesn't go anywhere? We came here, so you must be going someplace, okay? Um, baptizing. Now we like to do that here so we can all get in on it. And, and teaching. Uh, Jesus' great commission implies more than securing salvation for yourself as a disciple. Implied in the imperative, the command make disciples is both the call to and the process of becoming a disciple. We're all in a process, which is not complete. That's the bad part, okay? It's not complete yet. Um, until we see him face to face. Now look, we see but a poor reflection as in a uh, mirror, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, and I shall know fully, even as I am no fully known, and now these remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Or um, that's in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, 12, and 13 verses. And then in 1 John, as he's writing this, he says, Dear friends, dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we shall be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope purifies himself just as he is pure. Again, that process of becoming more and more like Jesus every day. And, you know, just the, from your own life experience, you know that there are some days you are more like Jesus than other days. <laughs> and that's okay. It's a process. That's why that love thing that covers a multitude of sins is so important because the Father showed that to us and so we should show that to one another. Amen? Oh, me? Uh, just wondered if I was in the right church. Uh, as you respond to the invitation to come out of the nations, okay, to start life as a disciple, you begin the life of discipleship through baptism and obedience to Jesus' teaching. And that's why we come to Sunday school, and that's why we want you to read the Scripture and do devotionals and pray so that all those things can happen. And, of course, that silly thing won't turn off up here. Um, make disciples. The force of that is of the command is as a disciple we are called individuals to absolute commitment we are to call people to absolute commitment to the person of Jesus Christ as their sole master and Lord we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God to implore means to beg someone earnestly or uh, desperately have you ever done that? Ask somebody about knowing the Lord and been desperate in your plea for them to do that. You see, Jesus broke down every barrier by calling all people into personal discipleship covenant with himself. And we come to him and him alone for eternal life, and we will always be only a disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus was preaching and um, back in the Gospel of John chapter 6, and he's talking about unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, well, you know, and those literalist Jews were like, 
What? You want us to be cannibals? They missed the point, but they weren't looking at it in spiritual eyes. And then it says a little later, uh, down in verse 66, uh, from this time, many of his disciples turned back, no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. And so in these uncertain times, we must remember that Jesus is the Holy One of God and hang on to that. That is our anchor, Jesus Christ the Lord. You know, the expression disciple virtually is virtually synonymous with the title Christian. And do you know what Christian really means? It means little Christ. We're a bunch of little Jesuses wandering around, okay, as though God were making his appeal through us, get the drift. Uh, and so we're supposed to have that uh, atmosphere about us. That same atmosphere that Jesus had that walked into every situation regardless of what was going on and spoke in love about eternal life. What would it mean to say the world is my parish today? What is the relationship between world missions and everyday discipleship? Amen. Every song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Sing holy, holy. Jesus, the name above every other name. 
Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful presence in our midst. And so, Lord, be with us. Send us forth in peace with your love, Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ.